Hey, what's good everybody? It's Begin the Uprising here. This is going to be um, just really a deck profile, but I am going to post it under my Enlighten the Lights uh playlist, I guess you can call it, on my channel. Uh, it has to do with something with Lightsworn, so why not post it under there? Uh, this is the deck list I took to the Lafayette Regionals. Unfortunately, uh, I guess you can say I scrubbed out. I did go 5-2 until a certain point where I scooped to a friend so he can try to get his invite. Um, but then that made me go 5-3 and then after that I dropped. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys the deck that I ran. Um, so pretty much. Uh, to, cap, to recap of what all decks that I went, played at the regional, my first round was a Blackwing player, Shadow Blackwings. Uh, it was built a little bit differently, but um, it, was, it did pretty good, you know. We went to game three, and then he just had a pressure up on the field. So, I mean, there really wasn't really much I can do. Um, then he had a solemn face down too. So I think I think he had a solemn, and he had a pressure up on the field. I had a couple friends watching. Uh, they can I don't know. They know what what all went on. Second round, I went up against a gravekeeper player, and unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, you know that you know that's one of uh, Vice Warren's worst matchups. I actually two would the guy, and. Um, Pretty weird. Uh, third round, I don't remember. Third round, I think I played Samurais, and um, he got two shans on me first turn, both games. So, I mean, it was all right. And uh, what was it? And then after that, I went up against Gravekeepers, and that was one of my friends that I scooped to, so he can get his invite. Um, then after that, I mean, I'm, I think I'll just leave that right there. I'm going to go ahead and get over the deck list. I did change it up quite a bit. So, um, I'll explain the changes, but other than that, everything else, I won't really explain. So you got the two JDs, double Celestia still, the uh, two Rikos, still rocking the Triple Wolf, the one Lumina, and one Garoth, one Aaron, one Lila still, one Lila, yeah, one Lila. Catch a lot of hate for that, but you know what, uh, one Arcus. One Jane, one Honest, double Card Trooper, and this was the only change I made in the Monster lineup. Uh, I did have a Trooper and I did have a Veiler in the main deck, and as much as of a like good decision that was to keep Mailer in the in the uh, Mailer really, Veiler in the main deck, I actually decided to side it and I put it in the extra Trooper because I mean it helps more than Veiler. I mean, you get your 3 mil, you mill your wolf before your battle phase, that's always good, as well as uh, whenever it's destroyed, you get a card in your hands, you draw a card, and it's always good. I mean, it's it combos well with uh, wolf and plague, you know, you can stack a card on top, you can stack a wolf on top for plague, mill it, mill wolf from trooper, and then sinker for an easy 9, a misworm, and possibly in the future, a trishula. So, got the double trooper, very good. Uh, the one plague and one necro and one gores and that does it for the monster lineup. I mean, it's a relatively low monster count I think it's only like 21 22 somewhere in there for light swarms And I think that's really really low for light swarms, but it seems to work fine for me So I don't know we might change it in the future, but for now we got the one charge and we still got the three recharges Obviously still rocking the three reincarnations The double MSTs I'm probably, I don't know, because I want to I want to switch these out for like gold rares or something like that, because people have been telling me, uh, this this past week, I'm Geoper85, he like, he informed me that it's easy to get caught stacking with Hobby League cards, and these are Hobby League MSTs, and it's caught stack, and you, it's easy to get caught stacking because these are a lot thicker, but I don't know, I might keep them, but I might switch to golds, so I'm not sure. Uh, one Dark Hole, one Reborn. One true note. I picked this up this weekend thanks to my boy Matt Fish. It's a first edition Hollow True Nade. I never see those bitches. Uh, one true nade, one foolish, and one book. That bitch is hollow. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I had to brag about that for one second. Uh, trap lineup is two threatening roars. I especially want to keep these in right now because Fish OTK. I mean, if you flip up Fish, o if I mean, if you go up against Fish OT OTK and you activate Threatening Roar, they're going to do one of either two things. They're going to just keep all the resources in their hand for one turn, 
and uh, wait till they can attack to go off, or they're going to go ahead and set up on the field with like Stardust and Steely Kenneth and stuff like that, and they can't really do anything that turn because they can't attack. So they're pretty much you know going to have control on the field during that turn, and then it gives you one more turn to where you can like out you know like pretty much drop JD or something like that or Dark Hole or something like that. Get around the Stardust and drop Dark Hole. It gives you an extra turn to recuperate. Uh, one Force, one Beckoning Light, and one Chirinal. Um The last build I was running two Trap Stuns, I believe. I took out the two Trap Stuns. Yeah, I took out the two Trap Stuns. You heard me. And I put in a, a Tyrannal, and I put back in the Threatening Roars. I took out the Tyrannal, or I took out the Trap Stun for a Tyrannal, because Tyrannal is pretty much like a staple now, especially in Light Swords. Um, I, I just really took it out because Trap Stun, it can be a dead draw a lot. And Torrential, I mean, you can set it and you can disrupt a lot of plays like that. And I can see this being a lot more, like, it can be a lot more useful than in, like, mid-game than Trap Stun. Because Trap Stun is really just, like, a, like, 20% of the time, like, disrupt people. If they, like, bottomless or, like, they activate E-Call, you can activate Trap Stun. But 80% of the time, it's really just a setup card because you can Trap Stun to a JD. That way, it won't get worn in your bottomless or something like that. But I feel like this would do a lot more help than Stun. But I do, I mean, I do have the Stun right here. I mean, trust me. I do want to put it in. I just don't know what to take out for it, to be honest. I mean, I do want to put it in. I know that Trap Stun is a very, very good card. I just don't know what to take out for it. Uh, extra deck is one arm. This guy actually put in a lot of work this week, and I actually busted him out quite a few times. Uh, one Cataster. One Tech Genius Hyper Librarian. Soon. But until then, we rock the Android. One Brynak. One Guy Knight. One Black Rose. One Stardust. One Infernity Doom. One Scrap Dragon. One Colossal Fighter. I took out the Light End Dragon. I put it in Red Dragon Archfiend simply because if Reaper is at two, and if they have a Reaper up on their field, and I don't have really a way around it, I can always go for Red Dragon Archfiend. And I can attack, and then Reaper's gone. Um, and then, I mean, as always, you know, it's a 3,000 beat stick, so it, it's heavy beater. I mean, you got the Mist Worm. And I took out Trishula, and I put in this guy right here. Iron Chain Dragon, I had a feeling that I would Synchro a lot more for 4 than any other uh, Synchro, so I decided to put in Iron Chain. I only busted out once, and it didn't really help in that situation, because it just got solemned. Um, so, Trishula, April 19th, you know, keep it in there. One Decisive Armor. Uh, this card, I mean, is really... I mean, I guess if I go up against like another light based deck, I could bust this out, but I just wanted to keep it in there just because I can Synchro for 10 easily. If I have like a four star up on my field, as well as if I like mill a wolf the previous turn is still up on my field, I can always do like a plague or something. And then, oops, I can always, you know, activate. If they just so happen they have a light, I can always, you know, destroy all their backfield and stuff like that. Plus, I mean, it's a 33 33. Uh, it's a heavy beater. It's tough to get around. So I just want to have the option open to where if I can sink for 10 and if it's going to be game changing, I want to have that option to where I can do that. And one Chimera Tech Fortress. I did see some gadget players over there. I did see, I did see some Machina uh, plant players over there, but just fortunately I didn't have to run into them. So uh, side, I did change this up quite a bit too. You got the two Cyber Dragons. Very, very, I mean, almost like a staple card in the side right now. I mean, very good card. If it's not in your side deck, then go put some in. Okay, the two Veilers, the one that I put in the main deck and as well is another one. I mean, whatever you can think of, Valor pretty much covers it. Valor is an amazing card. One Consecrated Light. I did put this in, uh, this side deck, for, I mean, Grave Keepers and Value Turbo. I was expecting Value Turbo a lot more than Black Wings, like show Black Wings. But I'm glad that I did have this in my side deck because I did go up against a Black Wing player. And there were Black Wings over there. And uh, so, yeah, good card. Double Twisters, um, you know, Dragon Ravine. And if you hit their Dragon Ravine, Dragoonity slow down by like 70%, in my opinion. As well as, you know, the occasional Necker Valley, you know. It's just Twister, great card. One Chivalry. I mean, I was expecting Glad Beast. I didn't, there were a lot of Glad Beast players there, too. And I just didn't, uh, didn't really go up against them, fortunately. As well as Monarchs, dropping Faders, dropping Gores, all that good shit. One Oppression. Double Chain Disappearance. There's a reason this card is like 10 bucks, guys. This hits like everything. Like, 
plants, car curries, uh, fucking dragoonities, yeah. Dragoonities, it hits Dragoonities, it hits a Phalanx, it slows them down so much. I mean, they can, they still have plays to make outside the Phalanx plays, but they, I mean, it slows them down a lot, and they have to really think of what they're going to do next. I mean, it hits a lot of stuff. And of course, you got the two walls and the two decrees. So, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, I'm sorry that I made this a 10-minute video, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I'm going to be posting up a new video sometime soon, like two new videos actually, sometime soon, so stick around for those, alright guys, peace out.